yes, we figured it out. Hey, everybody on Instagram. Hey, hey. We can do this. We can do hard <laughs> things, right? So, um, so uh, my esteemed colleague, Ebony Byrne of Liberty Financial and I, we're just trying to go live over on TikTok. I'm Alex Beatty, divorce prep and financial planning coach. And Ebony and I usually go live on, um, on Thursdays at this time on TikTok just to kind of talk through a couple of things between the two of us. <laughs> And then we take people's questions. So yeah. this isn't one of the regular kind of interviews that I do. This is really free form. We like to open it up and um, just to give people just a, a quick 20 minutes, 25 minutes with us if you have a question. And otherwise, then I kind of launch in and or Ebony launches in and we just start talking about <laughs> stuff in, you know that's divorce related yeah. um, more than anything. But first and foremost, before I hand over the talking stick, um, I just want to say happy new year to everybody i hope everybody had a really great holiday ebony what about you did you did you get to go away or were you like homeward bound I, most of the time yeah my daughter was at her dad's this year for new year so my guy and i went down to my sister-in-law's in ohio so we went down there and just had like a great time and it was really nice it was really nice how was your new year it was great Eight, celebrated with friends and my kids and um, I had my kids for New Year's this year which is always great I love bringing it in because then I'm gonna be home in bed by 10 10 o'clock because I celebrate at 9 um, <laughs> but I was, love it, that it was yeah a really we good, it, that's a holiday go. we did not at, so when we did the holidays for our parenting plan Halloween and New Year's um, Eve were not holidays and i didn't think about that at the time so those holidays they just fall wherever they fall on the calendar for us so mm -hmm. so there'll be years where she'll be right with him and then as it as the calendar moves so um something to think about for folks uh when you're trying to figure out your parenting schedule like what holidays are important to you uh so it's kind of an interesting like i'm okay with it like i mean it's eight years in now but like <laughs> It was like an odd one to realize, like, oh, crap, I, we didn't think about those as holidays while figuring out the parenting schedule. Um, yeah, you, I never would have thought to do that. I mean, I'm pretty fortunate. It's kind of, we did the more paint by numbers version of it, yeah. right? Like alternating holidays yep. and stuff. Um, and I'm sorry that I was not looking at you while you were oh, speaking. You're, you're but I fine. You're totally fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, that was a holiday we didn't alternate. The other, like all the major ones we alternate, but um, New Year's and Halloween, which when she was little, Halloween was a big deal. Yeah. So I wanted to take her trick-or-treating and stuff. And so since it's not the best, it's a high conflict situation. So he wasn't willing to share those um, times. So I didn't get to take her during when she was little, but we would do other stuff instead. So we do like Zubu and other events so that I could have that experience when she was little to take her trip or treating. So something to think about. Yep, definitely something to think about. All right, so what I was doing when I was being so rude and not listening to you, and again, <laughs> if you have a question about divorce prep, financial yes. planning, uh, uh, financial recovery after yes. divorce, preparing uh, perhaps just to getting a hold of your budget and reassessing or taking over the reins for the first time mm -hmm. and wanting to get a good game plan, which is where my colleague Ebony really, that's her area of specialty. She can, yes. She's all about getting you right with your money and telling your money where to go. Mm -hmm. So I thought we could cover kind of a couple of the biggest mistakes people make during divorce. Yeah. And if people have something they want to jump in with, that's great. Um, but I'm gonna go and and I you know I like doing this with you as a game. Okay, yep. so what what would you think of one of the biggest mistakes, um, just based on more of a broad uh, net <laughs> being drawn? What do you think one of the mistakes would be? Wow, one of the biggest mistakes I see my clients make with their money is really, I think, not being realistic. Yeah. Uh, with what is what it is right we know what we want it to be we know what we hope it could be <laughs> but that like not really being real with ourselves and looking at those numbers that tends to be the biggest issue that I see with people because uh, people you don't you don't want to see it right it's scary and so avoiding it not paying attention to it that kind of stuff leads to bigger issues That's so you definitely you gotta yes. have the reality in order to make a plan. 
that was that was number four of these four that I was able to get. And so it was neglecting your finances. You know, I'm talking mm -hmm. about this all the time. And you and I are on the same page about this. Like when you realize that you are headed for a separation or a divorce, um, you're going to have a lot of like anxious yeah. thoughts come up. And yes. one of the first is, holy shit, uh, what am I going to do? Yeah. Am I going to financially survive? And um, I would say that probably the most effective thing that you can do, because it's like everything I talk about all the time, is to get really granular yes. about your yes. financial realities, yep. what they are now, so that you can kind of anticipate what they're going to be after. And you can use that as a tool during your divorce, yep. because there are things that are going to be have to be split up, whether it's assets that are tangible or intangible, mm -hmm. bank accounts, debts, all of it. Um, so don't be afraid. Don't don't get don't let fear overwhelm you. Really get on top of that. And my page has tons of tips on how to do that. So does Ebony's. Yeah. So neglecting your finances is definitely one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. Yep. Colleen just dropped in. Will yes, my credit, I see that. Oh, will my credit score go down after my divorce is finalized? I will need to purchase a different uh, vehicle within a year. Uh, yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah, divorce itself doesn't affect your credit no. score. So I think sometimes people think that. Now, what will affect your credit score is if you have, um, like, if all of the your accounts are joint accounts, for example, and you both close them, you close them all, then that means you you will change the age of your credit, and you don't have any of your own established credit. So that kind of stuff will change. Um, if you sell your house and now you have a different house, like those kinds of things, but those are normal things. If yeah. your ex doesn't pay something, um, and let's say go to collections, then yes, that can affect your credit. But if you haven't had to do any of those things for the most part, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on it and see what you've got going on. And, and if all of your credit was joint, then that will change that it just will because it's going to change the age of your accounts but if you close them uh sometimes you can have one person removed like and you know so that's something you'd want to talk to your credit um card companies with but sometimes you can do that so there's ways to to keep like keep that to a minimum colleen it was it's a great question yeah. yes totally agree with ebony just going through a divorce is not going to ding your credit mm -hmm. it's always smart though it, i don't know where you are in the process um if you have a lot of joint accounts or if you have joint credit cards, it's time to get your yeah. own credit card, right? So anticipate that things are going to change. Don't wait until the last minute. Open your own checking mm -hmm. account. Open your own savings yep. account. Getting a credit card in your name. All that stuff is good. And um, again, when it comes to credit, probably the, the best thing you can do, pull your credit report. Yep. There, you know, there are so many free ways to get access through Experian um, and through a myriad of uh, the other credit um, reporting agencies. Just pull it. That's free. And then you'll be able yep. to see and monitor if it changes. But it really shouldn't, especially mm -hmm. if you're getting a vehicle. I hope that helps. Thank you so much yeah. for dropping that. Yeah. Oh, she, she said, said thank you. You're thank so you. Yeah, that did help. Yeah, I think <laughs> also, too, if you think about it like this, everyone gets a free credit report from annualcreditreport.com. It's from the government. So you get a free report from all three of the agencies. Yep. Every, once a year. So every 365 days. So feel free to go in, grab a copy. I kind of recommend, especially if you're going through a divorce, pull all three um, at the same time. So normally, otherwise I'd say stagger it. But right now, if, if you're getting that part together, pull all three so you can see what's there because it, everything does not report to all three sometimes. So pull all three so you know what you've got, what you might have forgotten about, <laughs> what you still have. And that will also help you while you are trying to negotiate who's paying what during the process. That's really true. And Colleen, since you do anticipate that you're going to want to get a vehicle, um, start in kind of dipping a toe and inv investigating yeah. if you're going to need a loan or if you're going to need a lease. All this will help you know what kind of interest rate you're going to end up getting. So this is all falls under the category of um, kind of financially preparing and planning in advance, yeah. which is smart. And most people don't consider this. Yes, yeah. you're going to be going from this you know, married couple, one household now into two different households, and you're going to have to acquire some new things. This is such a smart question. I really, really appreciate it very much, very much. Um, okay, so what's another one of four? Okay. Um, 
what would you say is another big divorce mistake people make? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, I know the one that I made, which was uh, <laughs> um, trusting that your ex is going to hold up their end of the bargain, right? So that they're going to do what they said they're going to do financially. Yep. I think that is uh, a big piece of it. So, but that's my own personal <laughs> anecdotal story. I think the other piece would probably be underestimating how much things cost. Uh, oh yeah. That's a, that's definitely a big one for sure. Not really having a clear picture of how much it actually costs to run your household. Yeah. Uh, especially if you, if you managed it or you had two incomes because you're going from one income to two incomes to one usually, um, or you're going from one income to now you're back in the workforce or they have to go back to work. However, yeah. that worked out. Um, so those are my, my two, I don't know if either of those are on your well, list though. They, I mean, that is a really good one that I agree with you. It's and, and for for me, the way I frame that is, you know, um, you have to be really uh, cognizant of the fact that you're going from this we to a me, mm -hmm. and um, you can't anticipate that that other person is going to be looking for your best interest in yeah. mind. And that doesn't mean somebody's trying to sink you during the divorce process. It's just that. You know, like you said, the financial realities that kind of bubble up of going from, you know, a married household and sharing all the, the finances associated and then splitting it up and going on your own. I think there there's this idea of kind of like not speaking up or thinking somebody else is going to take care of you, yeah. as you said. And the truth of the matter is you are always your best advocate. Number mm -hmm. one, you are the person you can always rely on. Um, that's not to say people are out to get you again, but you should be able to um, find your voice in this process early because and you've got to speak up. Yeah. If you feel like something is being overlooked in the divorce process, you have to bring it up. If you feel like something's being um, misrepresented, it's on your shoulders to say, hold on a second. Um, don't expect somebody else is going to be more vigilant about that stuff than you are. So be a, don't yeah. be intimidated by it, I would say, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another one I would say is people who um, kind of drag their feet, drag it out, end up wasting a lot of money. Um, yes. Yeah. Look, the average cost of a divorce in the United States as of last year is between fifteen thousand and twenty thousand dollars. That's uncontested. That's for two people lawyering up and going yeah. to court. That's that's if everything goes smoothly. Yeah. That's a crazy amount of money, mm -hmm. right? Mediation can cost a lot less. Yeah. It's usually between five and seven grand. And that's, you know, for like a big mediation, it can mm -hmm. be definitely less. And the last thing you want to do is spend your, you know, your nest egg on the actual divorce process. Yeah. No, the goal is that each partner each spouse and the divorce and has some money <laughs> to start their lives with <laughs> yeah you would hope you would hope so yeah i do there's so many ways that things can be less expensive but i do think that people get really stuck in the fighting part yeah and they aren't looking at the cost and you need to kind of stop and think about you know quality of life when you're done with this process because the last thing you want to do is impoverish yourself because you're trying to get that person. Now, sometimes you can't help it because you have to fight for things because the other person is being difficult. But if you are able to do things, you know, in a, in a cost effective way at all times, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's much better and you'll have more peace in yourself when like just beyond that you're not digging yourself out of a hole that's much bigger than it needs to be um because it, there's a lot of fighting going on I, I completely agree with you i work with clients all the time you know it's it's my um it's my tagline whatever you want to call it part of my philosophy is there's an emotional side mm -hmm. to divorce and there's a business side and you need to separate the two asap yeah. and when you take the time to do that early in the process um, before a separation before a divorce it actually it's a domino effect that goes right to um saving money mm -hmm. that's the truth of the matter yeah because when you take the time to separate the emotional triggers the you know the fears and address yeah. them in the proper way that's what your priorities are going to be going through the divorce and what your mm -hmm. goals are as well as kind of getting granular crunching the numbers of your life figuring out yeah. how much it costs to live your life now how it's going to change and getting organized with everything that is going to set the tone yeah. for your side of this mm -hmm. process right which is what you have control over 
Yes. When you take the time to prepare in advance and you deal with the emotional side of it separate from the business side, what that also does is it gives you a North star, right? If you understand what your priorities and your goals are, that's going to draw a clear line through the entire negotiation process. Yeah. Are you going to get everything you want? No. I'm just going to say no. it right now. No. Let's, let's no. take a truth pill. It would be nice. But you and you're going to anticipate that you you know that your soon to be ex you know they're going to want some things too so the way to really cut back on wasting a lot of money during the process is thinking through your end of it as much as possible mm -hmm. anticipating and also not being reactive yeah. and that goes to what you were saying ebony about people just kind of burning through because they're they're acting out yeah. right because they're mad or because yeah. they want to get some you know make the other person you know hurt in some way and I always say that that's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die yeah <laughs> it's, like, yeah, it it's, it's not gonna way. work it's not gonna work and really at the end of the day it's just gonna drain you more than you need and I my hope always for people is to live your best life and sometimes that means you have to kind of let some stuff go not important stuff but that's where knowing what's important to you what your values are are so important when you're going through the divorce process because if you can figure that out while you're going through when you're done when you it that healing process is a lot smoother yeah. because now you you already know what your values are and now you can settle into them instead of now you're still dealing with all of this and then you have to try to figure out what your values are it's a lot harder to do not impossible not impossible well, but it is definitely a little bit harder definitely digging yourself out of a hole yeah. more for sure going yeah. I agree with you um I know like I hate to say this but it's already 5 30 we are we my time 8 30 um is 8 30 for you 7 30 yes I know it's 8 30 so um we're I have to jump unfortunately but I'm so glad that we switched over to Instagram TikTok yeah. hopefully next Thursday we'll be working for everybody that's with us right now thank you for joining please bookmark thursdays at this time we go mm -hmm. live on tiktok so if you have questions please drop them in then but mm -hmm. ebony and i are both available yeah. between now and then. so if you have a divorce prep or financial planning question please reach out um uh, you have my information the divorce mm -hmm. planner if you don't follow me please do check out yep. all my free resources and ebony please she is um you're definitely on my account as my one of my friends yeah. and your linkedin will post but she's yes. liberty oh, somebody give me a thumbs up thank you um <laughs> liberty, <laughs> liberty yes. financial services mm -hmm. um so the divorce planner liberty financial services uh, you know if you message us you're gonna get us yes you have any 